Of course, you're going to connect to your computer, whether it's a laptop, a PC, whatever, to your 7300. They are going to communicate with each other. I ran out of room on my desktop with USB plugs, so I got a hub that has some extra USBs I just plug into a USB. So this helped. I would strongly urge you to buy something like this. Second, I would suggest buying a cord to plug into your computer, I'm sorry, to your 7300 and of course to your computer. And the last thing is a cord remote control interface cable for your 7300 into your computer. Now, I use this for FT8. A lot of people say you don't have to use this for FT8, but I do. And you might shop around and get something cheaper than $25. One of the things that you need besides the hardware to talk to the radio and your computer is a USB, uh, I think they call it virtual port. I could be all wrong with that. Here's the address. I'll try to put this in my description. But as you go on down, you see, oh, USB driver. And there's a 7300. I see 7300. So you click that. And it says USB driver download. Again, the various radios. Say I agree, hit download, and once it is installed, well, let's just, uh, once it's installed, what you do is you go over to the left, type in device manager, pull up device manager. Once you're in device manager, you look at ports. Double click ports. And if you see your Silicon Labs, and you might have to restart your computer once you have installed the driver. I'm not sure. It's always a good idea when you install things on your hard drive is to reboot your computer. But you should see a Silicon Labs USB COM. Now yours might not be a 5. Mine's a 5. Other people's are a 7 or 2 or 1. A lot of different ones on the COM port. So don't worry if you say, well, mine's different than yours. Well, that's okay as long as you have Silicon Labs. But you're going to have to remember this particular one, uh, what COM port that is for your software. All right, one very important thing on this. I, I forgot, almost forgot to say it. Double click this on your Silicon Valley, go over to Power Management. See where it says allow computer to turn off this device to save power? I've been working CW a lot of times on the keyboard and trying to receive and all of a sudden it doesn't receive and I'm trying to do it with pencil and paper all of a sudden and it's not fun. So make sure this is unchecked or once in a while your program will stop working. Make sure it's not checked. Alright now if you go to the bottom right you see your speaker and it might be in another area if you right click this you open sound settings if you're listening to music or have a microphone on like I do you can see it's moving but up here these are the things where you see the COD EC this is where you're communicating between the radios now through that. So I click that and I'm not going to click this because you also have one on your microphone. It might be a different number than four. It might be a three or a five. Same thing here. This might be a three or five or seven depending on the computer and how much stuff you have in it. But you may want to switch it to both of these. One for the microphone, one for the speakers, of the CODEC. What I did is hit FT8 Princeton and there's a home page WSJTX. Notice the communications it has here. Right here is documentation if you want to read it for English and other languages. 
This is the installation. You have to know your computer will work on 64-bit or 32-bit. Once you realize that, just double click it and start downloading it. So now let's go over to the software and see some of the settings. All right, so you've opened up the software. You want to go to File at the top left hand corner and go to Settings. In the settings, we want to go put your call sign in and your grid. And you can look at your grid on qrz.com. I want to thank Rodney WM4RT. Uh, here's a grid square map. I'm an Echo Mike or EM15, which is right here in Oklahoma City. And he says the first two letters represents the main grid, which is Echo Mike. The two numbers are the position. That would be the 15. And since there are smaller grids in the main grid, the last two letters are your grid location. So thank you, Rodney. I appreciate that. Another thing is, I like a little larger in my eyesight and old age. I like to have it on 19, so that gives it a larger size uh, font when you're looking at the call signs. Another thing is your radio. They have various radios. Make sure yours is 7300. And I just changed it. Isn't that terrible? 7300. Remember I said watch and remember the COM port, whatever it is. Mine's COM port 5 under that Silicon Labs. And the baud rate, well, I'll show you in a minute. The baud rate on mine is 19200. It might work with uh, anything, but I have it 19200. We'll look into the radio in a little bit to see that. Database the bits, default, stop bits, default, and handshaking is default. Now I'm using the push to talk method, the cat program here. That's the you don't worry, the COM5 or whatever COM you have is grayed out. Transmit auto source is grayed out. The mode is none. And fake it is checked on the split operations. You can test your CAT program just clicking it and it should turn green. Another thing is remember when I said that CODEC? Well, you're going to have to set that up. And again, it might be five, it might be three, whatever. But this won't, this won't even show if your radio is turned off. So make sure your radio is turned on and this should pop up. Same thing with your output this has to be on the code deck also and again these numbers will change per transmitter something to think about there uh, micros reporting that uh, colors this is serve if you have to ch it checked um, new continent because it's going to be looking at your logbook you'll see this color when someone calls you it's sort of a peach, peach color and you can check this if you want to when the, they show up and let's see anything advanced when you're doing field day you'll you will change this up I'm not going to go into that that's about it as far as setting this up and you just hit OK now let's go over to the radio and see the settings on that one of the things I use is dimension 4 if your time is off on your clock and your computer it'll throw a really kink in the spokes so you want your time accurate you can go to WWV on the radio the universal standard time it'll, about every minute it'll have a tone set your computer clock to exactly to that time because if you're five seconds off lagging or or, or maybe not lagging <laughs> whatever the other is uh, it could throw your software off I've been using Dimension 4 to set my computer, and if I just hit Sync Now, it says I was off by 0 .08, 0 0.08 seconds, and so it, it has uh, synced my clock. Your clock might be way off. Maybe your battery is low in your computer, and your clock's way off, but it needs to be accurate. 
those are the two things. I'll put this website up here uh, in the description so you will be able to see it. And they do ask for donations, but you can still download it for freeware. Okay, as you can see here, I'm on 40, uh, 20 meters, 14.074. A lot of people use has sideband, but you need to go digital or data. And that'll put a D up here. Let's go over in our settings and just see what we have. I'm going to push menu and now I'm going to get in here a little closer so you can see it alright now I'm going to hit the set button I'm going to go up to where the connections are and I'm going to go straight all the way up. The first one is set at AF. The AC. The AC USB is set at 50%. The next one set it as off. And the next one is set as off. Now I'm going to push the button down. Here are my settings here. I've heard that this one where it's 40% is, you know, important. I have data off mode as mic and accessories. And I'm going to push down again. I have the data mode as USB. And let's see here. I'm going to, I pushed the button down, I'm going to go USB send keen. The USB send is RTS, USB keen is DTR, USB keen radio teletype is T DTR, probably nothing you need to know here. And inhibit timer at USB connection is on. So I'm going to go back. CIV. Let's go at the very top of that. Of course, the baud rate's automatic. The CVI address, this is, I believe, the ICOM address 94H. CIV transceives off. Remote transceive address 00H. Then the CIV output. For the antennas off, I have this unlinked from a remote. My CIB, CIB baud rate, remember 1920 or 19,200. Uh, the echo backs on, and that's about it. So let's go over to the radio and and just see what we have right now. I do not, I do have the preamp on. Preamp's off uh, there. And we're listening to FT8. Let's go over to the computer and see what's going on. Okay, hopefully you have something that you're receiving. I'm, has the transmitter set at USB dash delta and I'm on 14074. It should be receiving things right now. There they are. And I'm going to hit the uh, I'm going to hit the I haven't heard anything on this frequency for a while. If you look at your bottom row here, you can see that really nothing's happening. Nothing's in this area, so I'm going to call CQ and just see what we can find out. These are people calling or in conversations on the left side. So I'm going to hit CQ, and I'm going to hit, and I forgot to leave the enable on.
I'm using about three sixty watts right now, by the way. I'm not using a full hundred watts. Sometimes I even use ten or fifteen. And it continues calling CQ until someone answers or if the frequency becomes busy. Okay, if you notice the pink, someone called me here, and I responded. And he's going to be responding back to me shortly and giving me maybe an RR-73s. And I will say 73s. And sometimes this will go back and forth on the, the, the signal report. And sometimes I have to go down here where it says RR, and that means received and 73 so I have to double click it and then it'll go off the line so now that that's person contacted me and we've said 73s I'm gonna go over here where it says logbook or log QSO I put this in thanks for QSO or the conversation and I'll, I'll hit OK and it goes into the log of this particular program now if we want to call some someone uh, that we see here that we'll just go uh, uh, this W7 just called CQ we'll just call him here we are in the yellow calling him and see if he's gonna come back I just double click the CQ of course this guy's in Europe this is South America South America but I'd like to keep this in locally and just see if we can uh, contact him All right, he came back. Now I gave him, I'm giving him a report. This is all automatic. I'm not doing anything. Okay, mine automatically, or he automatically said 73s, and I'm replying in the yellow 73s. And that's all it is. All you do is double click someone that you want to talk to. When you get through talking to them, go over here and log it in. This is all oh, the person's call sign, the start time, the band, the report, FTA, everything, and the grid. Okay, I hope this helped. Thanks so much for watching.